In this video, I'd like to continue uh, analysis of the same system that had this quasi steady state structure. And I'd like to show you how to step away from the epsilon equals zero case. So I'm going to fill in a bunch of details, fine details around the edges of this phase plane problem. Okay, so we had this circular null plane of radius r, and then another null plane going through the origin at an angle. And we found that we had a stable steady state here and an unstable steady state down here, saddle particular. And now what I want to do is fill in some of the details that I sort of glossed over in this in the quasi steady state epsilon equals zero analysis. Okay, so um, just the overall dynamics here, if you go through and calculate, you know, vectors, um, if you're if you have a large y value and x is equal to zero, let's say, then y prime with x equals zero, y has a negative sign in front of it. So y prime is negative. So up here, we have downward vectors. And then those have to be zeroed out by the time they hit the red line, which means they're going to be upward in this quadrant down here or this region here. And then um, where else do we have? We have, um, well, that's it actually. Everything on this side of the red line is down and everything on this side of the red line is up. And now X's, X directions, so we have rightward movement here, we found that from the X phase line in the quasi steady state analysis. And outside we'll have leftward movement. Okay, so now I've drawn these out of scale because the Y components should all be much smaller than the X components. Um, but I'm just putting them there as like a crude reminder. Okay, so what that means is that if we do start off with a, a solution here, let's say, we're going to move rapidly to the right, but with a slight downward bow. And then we hit a zero, a horizontal zero vertical component, horizontal crossing, and then we come up here slightly. Now let me zoom in and try and figure out how this is going to work. Oh yeah, remember that the green is the vertical null cline. And so the arrows have to be like this and like that. And so that means that this rapidly rightward moving solution that I'm in the middle of drawing is going to have to make, as soon as it gets close to the quasi steady state, the, um, the X equation, the X prime term is going to get smaller because we're getting closer to a zero value there. And that means that both X and Y will be no longer very different in scale. And we can turn the corner here on a very zoomed in, but we can still turn the corner and then we have to continue proceeding up. So any solution that starts, let's say even down here and comes across, well, let me try and get this more accurate. We come down slightly, cross horizontally, and then rise again. And then by the time we get over here, we're going to have to curve over and cross it. And then once we're above it, here, I've already gone too far away from the quasi steady state. We have, as soon as we're that far away, we're going to get pushed back to it because of that um, large X prime term relative to the Y prime. So what really is going to happen here, and let me be a little bit more accurate about that. We're going to cross it and hover just above it, a little bit off from it and above it all the way up to the steady state. So that's what, what things are going to look like below that steady state. And above them, we have an increase, slight increase. Let me not be so dramatic there. Slight increase, crosses horizontal. Then it starts coming down again, but still always moving to the left. And then when I get close to the quasi steady state or the null cline, I'm going to have to curve and cross it vertically and then hug it on my way in to the steady state. So there you can see that's the, and if it was coming in directly here, you can now see that very typical U-shape structure um, that we see around stable nodes. Okay, so um, down here near the saddle, what do we have happening? So let me keep the arrows in there so we can see it a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so for 
in the middle here, then down, down here, let's say, we drop down, cross horizontally, and keep going. And the rest of that picture is going to look the same as what I just drew previously. Uh, oh, no, that's not quite right. So now, yeah, this is a little bit different, right? Because we have to cross it vertically. We can't do what we did here. So this curve can't come across and cross green vertically because green is tilted off in the wrong direction. So what that means is that we're going to continue to hug it like this until we get here. And then once we're here, we can cross it vertically and join all the others on the far, on the far right side, just barely on the right side of the quasi steady state. And then, um, so as we get closer, well, we can follow this one back in time. And this one is going to have a similar problem. We have to cross this one vertically, but we can't. So come going back in time, this one has to have come from, and now we can cross it somewhere back here, over there. So that's all going in this direction, right, in time. Okay, so a solution that's just coming out from near the saddle here would start here and move over in this direction. But what would it be able to do going backwards in time? Well, it would it would be able to cross here, and it must have been just hugging on the inside of there. And a solution on the inside here Oh, no, this is always coming up a little bit. That's slightly increasing. And it'll do the same as the previous one there, but going backwards in time, what do we expect this one to do? Well, it could, it, it can't really get up to the red curve and cross it horizontally. It must be coming from a vertical crossing here. And so now in this region, I said that everything outside the null line has to be moving to the left. So it seems like this would not be able to, oh yeah, I would have to cross. Oh, this is going backward in time. So that makes sense. So going backward in time. So we'd have a solution here that would be coming this way, tracking along an unstable, this was, remember, this was an unstable quasi-steady state, and then it crosses up here and zips around coming this direction. And so there's something funny going on at the bottom here too. So we have a solution on the inside would go forward in time and have to track on the inside because it can't cross. Because if it were to cross, it would be crossing not vertically, which it can't do. But then this would be able to wrap around there and track it here and then zip off backward in time. So that would come in like this. So now we've, we can see this actually all filling in nicely in all parts around the quasi-steady state. So you can continue doing this type of exercise throughout and you can fill in the details and see that really when epsilon is equal to zero, the solution curves collapse exactly to the green curve. But if epsilon is not exactly equal to zero, then we see there's a way of filling in all these details. And instead of hugging the green curve, sometimes we're hugging the outside edge of it. Sometimes we're hugging the inside edge of it and so on. So those are some of the little details that I ignored or I skipped over in the previous video. But if you were curious how to reconcile the quasi steady state epsilon equals zero case with the actual non-zero epsilon case, this is how you would do it.